Hello and welcome to the Web Dev YouTube channel. Today we're going to be carrying over our MongoDB series and we're going to be getting our database ready for production. So without further ado, let's get straight into the terminals. Okay, so our droplet is set up. I had to set up a new droplet for this video because I deleted the old one as it was quite a long time ago. Uh, principle is exactly the same. Uh, first of all, we need to SSH into our box. So copy the IP address from here on the droplet dashboard, open up a new terminal, SSH root at IP address. And now we're inside our box. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to do a couple of things. So, with Linux, there is an internal networking firewall. And there's also a networking firewall from outside the box, which is directly related to the droplet. Now, this firewall will protect traffic from the outside of the box, and the UFW, UFW will protect it from inside. So, if think of it like this. Your Mac has a firewall, which I have turned off on my Mac, um, but then you also have a firewall on your router which will restrict internet traffic from outside of your network. That's exactly what we've got here. Manage firewalls option will protect networking traffic. The UFW will protect the ports from inside the box. So for the purposes of this demo, to make it easy, is I'm going to just disable the UFW firewall. So I'll type in UFW status in the command line. You can see these are all the ports that are being forwarded or limited. There's no port 27017 there. So what we're going to do is just do UFW disable. This will stop the firewall from inside the box and it will also stop it on system startup. The other thing we have to do is allow access to 27017, which is the default Mongo port, from the networking firewall of the droplet. So to do that, on the left hand side, click networking, scroll down to firewalls and click manage firewalls. Now you'll notice that I have a firewall rule set already here called Mongo. That's because I have a couple of other servers that use Mongo and I wanted to forward the ports for these. For the purposes of this demo, we'll just create a brand new rule set. So click create firewall on the right hand side, give it a name. We'll call this Mongo YouTube. Uh, scroll down and you see we've got inbound rules and we're currently accepting port 22, which enables us to uh, log into our SSH uh, terminal. So we need to create a new rule, custom, TCP, and the port we want is 27017. Uh, scroll down to the bottom, select the droplet you want this firewall rule set to apply to, which will be our newly created one. So select the newly created droplet from the uh, list and click create firewall. There we have it. So now Mongo YouTube is our networking firewall rule set that is forwarding port 27017 to the box with UFW disabled so that we don't get any uh, weird blockings or anything when we're trying to connect to our Mongo database. So that's uh, all I've really got to say about networking in a minute. I'm a bit of a newbie to networking on droplets but that's what I found out when I was uh, creating this video. Uh, it's, it's, it's been many attempts. So uh, the second thing we need to do is, in order to connect to Mongo, we need to create a username and a password. So I've created a new connection, and I've given it the IP address of the droplet, uh, the external IP address. The port number is 27017, don't need to change that. Uh, authentication here, it's normally none. Uh, well, it was none in the in the first video. We need to change this to username slash password. Uh, what we need to do is we need to create a username and a password with the root role in MongoDB under the admin collection of the Mongo database. Now, that's a little bit of a mouthful. So let's uh, let's, let's go to our um, uh, box. So if we go to Mongo and type in admin, and then type in DB. You notice we are now on the admin database, which is the authentication database. Uh, now from here, we need to raw create a admin user so that we can connect via Mongo Compass. So we need to do a little bit of JSON and uh, a Mongo command. So we type in DB, which is admin, dot 
create user with a capital W, not a Y. And we pass it through an object of user with root. Uh, you don't necessarily need to choose root, you can choose whatever you want. I like root. Uh, and we also need to pass through a password, which is not password, it's PWD. And pass it through a strong, really, really strong password. Do not use password as your password. Um, and also a third parameter, which is roles. This will be an array of strings, which is the uh, role that we want to apply the user for. And the default one is always root. So let's create a user. And you notice here we have successfully added a user. So if you go back to Mongo Compass, in these two fields here, use the credentials we just created, which be root and password. So if we go back to the terminal, go into your uh, CD slash ETC and vim mongod.conf. Now the two things we need to do are, first of all, we need to bind the network interface external IP address to our internal IP address. Uh, in order to do this, uh, there's a bind IP, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's sort of like a YAML file, I think. Um, there's there's a there's a local host next to bind IP. Just add a comma to the end. Uh, go back to your MongoDB uh, dashboard, copy the IP address, and paste it to the end. Remember, do not put a space after the comma. It's just uh, literally just put the the address. We also need to enable security via authorization, which is the admin user that we created. So down here where it has hashtag security, uh, take out the hashtag, create a new line, and set the authorization with a capital Z, uh, with a Z, not an S, um, to enabled. Uh, press escape colon wq to save the file um, and also we need to restart the mongo service so sudo service mongod stop and then mongo service mongod start so if we go back to compass now and click connect and now we're in our MongoDB uh, server, and this is not using an SSH tunnel. So if you wanted to use this in an API using Node.js, PHP, C Sharp, anything you want, uh, you should now be able to uh, using those admin credentials. Uh, remember to always um, cr maybe create two admin credentials. So you might have one which has root and then you might want to set up another group um, that has slightly less connections. We can talk about that in a future video if people want to see it. Uh, we can talk about setting up groups. We can also talk about um, setting up the UFW internally so that we can uh, forward ports from the box to the networking range uh, more effectively. Um, it's it's not it's not completely secure but we can start using it and uh, even if you don't want to use it on production yet you can uh, still use it for beta services or you can connect to it from your local um, applications uh, whether that be mobile or web um, you can connect to it um, externally so yeah that's how you that's how you set up mongo um, I'd like to thank you for watching and also putting up with my mistakes. Um, this was a little bit more complicated than what I'm used to, but hopefully I'll get better at making the videos. Um, I can normally do it pretty well, um, but I think what I'm going to be doing now is actually writing scripts to go with my videos so that I know what I'm talking about. And if something messes up, then all I have to do is blame the script. So um, thanks for watching. Remember to thumbs up my video, subscribe. Um, for the people who commented on my last video saying they wanted the second one, if you want a third one, just let me know. Or if you want to know about something else to do in the web development world, then just let me know. And I'll see if I can make one and try and make one a bit sooner than uh, leaving a two-month gap. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.